Um, so imagine you needed to meet a friend in New York City, uh, let's say at noon, on January 1st, 2015. But you can't talk to them ahead of time. Can't, can't, can't con converse with them. They don't have a phone. You can't email them. You just have to pick some point in the five boroughs uh, and hopefully meet up with them. Where would you go? So, no one say anything. Just think about it for a minute. <laughs> think about it for a minute. I'd be willing to bet that a lot of you thought of this, okay? The information desk at Grand Central Terminal. It has a lot of properties that suggest that would be a good place to go if we couldn't talk, okay? If you're not from New York, you may have thought about this. Uh, <laughs> Non-New Yorkers sometimes suggest this. This is actually not a good idea. <laughs> Okay. So this isn't my example. Uh, this is an example from Tom Schelling, who won the Nobel Prize in 2005 in economics. And, uh, but he was the first one to, to point out this importance of focal points. These are things that there's nothing inherently uh, that says, you know, Grand Central Terminal. No one announced this is the place you go for this kind of thing. But uh, it, it becomes a convention. It, it helps people coordinate. Um, I would argue that crowdsourcing and crowdfunding depend on a kind of coordination that's like this. Um, and let me just back up a minute and say, in any kind of market, before buyers can uh, even begin to haggle, come to terms, they need to find each other first. They need to find each other in, in time and space. And if we look uh, around us, there are many solutions to this problem of trying to bring people together. So you have city districts. You can go to, uh, used to be Fulton Street, but now it, Fulton Market in the Bronx if you want to trade fish, uh, if you want garments, if you want diamonds. You, know, you go to certain places in the city, uh, and that's where you go to trade that thing. Uh, you can see it with market days, where you know, a market's going to happen uh, you know, on this day, between these hours, at this location. And what it is, is we're setting up a convention to try to thicken up the market so there's sufficient numbers of buyers and sellers at that location. Um, and and you know, if you start looking around, you start seeing these sort of guideposts all over the place that tell people, this is where you go to trade this. All right, so what's the crowd's connection? Well, <laughs> I would say that uh, crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, there is this substantial search component. Oftentimes, you have uh, both workers and tasks are idiosyncratic. Uh, investors and projects are idiosyncratic. Um, and you're often, you're looking to engage in this sort of one-off, one-shot transaction, you know? It's not like you're a restaurant and you go to the Fulton Fish Market every single night and buy fish. It's sort of a one-off thing, right? You're gonna go work on one of Lucas's tasks that maybe you'll never work on that kind of task again. And so in that setting, it's hard for conventions to arise about where you go to trade a certain thing. It's a, it's a difficult problem. Um, and I, I would say that it, it, in the crowdsourcing context, it's both a, uh, a blessing and a curse in that you know, the problem is really hard because you have a market that's not at all constrained by geography. Right? So this is, this is a picture of Adam Smith's uh, famous pin factory, where he was the one who said, you know, if you can take, uh, rather than having individuals make pins, one pin at a time, you can break it up and some person can specialize in cutting the wire, another person can specialize in putting on the pin heads, um, and, and this is great. You can, get, you can get a lot of efficiency gains from this. Uh, but he also pointed out that the extent that you can do this is going to be limited to how many pins you can sell. It doesn't make sense to specialize lots of people doing the little tasks of making pins if you can only sell a dozen of them. So what's the crowdfunding connection or crowdsourcing connection? Well, we're in a world where you can have people do tasks for which the global demand is only 40 hours a week. You can, you can, it can, it, in, in its best... Uh, in our best imagination, it can be something where you have really, really hyper-specialization. People can, can really, really focus on something. The flip side of that is it's going to be that much harder for people to find each other. If, if I need to find someone who they're the only person in the world who does that thing, it's going to be a challenging task to me. And so what do we do online when we have to do this coordination problem? Well, we don't get geography, right? So we can't, we can't use streets, we can't use locations. We can't really use time either. You know, these markets are asynchronous. They're usually running all the time. It's not like we can say, these are the market hours. So what do we do? Well, we do things uh, like how we have recommender systems. So we try to use algorithmic means 
to match up buyers and sellers. Uh, and we can try to put things into categories. So we can try to create a taxonomy of goods in a marketplace and hopefully people will self-classify and, and put their, what they're selling in the right bucket. Um, I think that uh, a lot of, uh, ODES faced this problem uh, in spades. Of, of trying to put things in the right bucket and help people match. So Odesk is an a online labor market. People can do computer programming, graphic design, data entry, but it's usually much more finely scaled than that. And I think some of the things that worked well on, on Odesk and are sort of apply to all platforms, one is you want to find uh, the, the facets that are important in your market. Right? So what are the dimensions of buyers, sellers, and goods that people care about? Uh, and then try to build tools around them. And you know, one thing that worked really well was you know, most sites, electronic commerce sites, have some kind of a search feature. Just looking through the query logs, you can get a sense of what people take and use to try to find each other. What are the words that they use to describe certain things? And that can kind of be a jumping off point. Another thing you can do is try to force or nudge people towards using a, a controlled vocabulary. Meaning, you know, if you can just get everyone to use the same language for the same thing, uh, that's often a first step towards helping people find each other. Uh, if they have different terms or the two sides have different terms, it's going to be a lot harder to create that, that thick market that you want. Uh, and the last one that's a little bit cut off is that you can, you can force explicit trade-offs where uh, people have to pick from some controlled list. You know, I have to pick A, B, or C, and then that can get broadcast to the market, and that's another dimension people can use to help find. Um, you know, one of the things I did at Odesk was to start organizing the, the skills. So a lot of the supply and demand are organized around the skills that people have, technical skills. And before, everyone could just enter in their own skills when they were describing their job, and they could enter in their own skills when they were describing their profile. And I saw basically every single way a person could write PowerPoint, I think. I mean, this is like a small sample of the ways. And, and th this, is, this is just was repeated for every single skill. Um, and so you can imagine you know, the difficulty of getting people who needed PowerPoint, um, you know, if they didn't enter it in exactly the right word, you know, depending on how sophisticated your search engine is, you're going to miss things. And you can keep, make, keep making your search engine more sophisticated, or you can try to get everyone to use the same terms for the same thing. Uh, another example, w the, this, this is, um, you know, even if you can get things down to a finely grained, you know, this is computer programming using the Python programming language, People have differences of, you know, I really want high quality uh, at a high price. I want low quality at a low price. They're still differentiated on that other dimension. And this is an example of, of forcing people into explicit trade-offs. So when pe people post a job on ODES now, they have to say if they're looking for entry level, intermediate, or expert. And they have to pick that, and then that's revealed to the market. And what you find is that you get a lot of sorting. So you, know, you can see, because it's an online marketplace, you can see people's historical profile rate, their historical earnings, and you, you get a nice uh, separation where people apply to the, to the right job for them without uh, just bidding up that, uh, not bidding up too much. There's a little bit, but that's not necessarily bad for Odesk either. Um, now, th this, is, this kind of applies, I think, to almost any kind of market where people are selling things. When you have uh, crowdsourcing in particular, People care a lot more about the identity of the person they're paired with to trade, right? They're not, we're not talking about people, you know, buying uh, uh, something that's a commodity and you really don't care who the seller is or, you know, labor in particular, you really care about the worker that you get paired with and the worker cares about the firm that they get paired with. So you have this matching market where people have to both choose and be chosen. Um, and this, this introduces a lot of complexity to this matching problem. Um, and just to give you an example, so let's just consider the Netflix problem. The Netflix problem is you have viewers and you want to recommend movies to them. So here's Stephen Colbert, do we recommend The Godfather or do we recommend Frozen? Okay. So this, this, is a, this is a problem we've kind of thought a lot about. You know, Netflix challenge, you know, research on recommender systems, you collect people's preferences, you can do a lot with this. Well, how does it become more complicated in a matching market? Well. One, uh, the movie might say, I don't want to be watched by this guy. That's, a, that's the same as a, a worker saying, I don't want to work for this person. Okay? So if Netflix had to take that into consideration with every recommendation they made, uh, the movie they recommend might say, no thanks, not interested. Uh, that's a complication. 
You can also have stock out. Um, you know, this, they do actually have a version of this where you know, I'm already being watched by someone else when they had physical disk. But you know, now, at least when things are streaming, you have less of this. But this, this becomes a very important matching market where it's a labor market where a person is inherently constricted, restrained in how much supply they have. Uh, this kind of problem will come up all the time. And, and if you look at other marketplaces, uh, you know, this is a, a big problem on Odesk. It's a problem on Airbnb. Uh, managing availability. You, know, you, can't, you can't just continue to direct all your traffic at your best seller. You have to apportion it out among your sellers in some way. And this is just another complication. Uh, you can have incomplete information. So you know, Netflix knows that that's the godfather. But you know, in, in reality, in a, in a labor market, you'd say, I'm a movie about the mafia. Eh, could be good, could be bad. There's a lot of movies that meet that, m meet that characteristic or characterization. Uh, and so making good recommendations when you only have this kind of incomplete information is quite challenging. But th this is, that's not terrible. What's really bad is this one. Uh, deceptive information. You know? So you can say, no, 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 I'm not the godfather. I'm, uh, I'm the Lord of the Rings. Or I'm whatever you want to be, just hire me. Um, and and this, is, this also happens uh, in matching markets to a big degree. So you, know, you can kind of keep track of the time. You know I have five minutes left. Yeah, you're probably not expecting me to have five more slides that say how you, this is how you solve all these problems. Um, I, I'm here more to just point out they are problems. Uh, and they're, they're tough problems to solve. But um, they seem to be something that's common to all these kind of matching markets. Crowdsourcing is, is no exception. Uh, and it's something I, I spend a lot of time thinking about, sort of what are, what are sort of steps, or what, what are tools we can use to solve these kind of problems. Um, so solution, it's a work in progress. I do not have a solution. Um, and so that's my last slide. And uh, I think now we move to the Q&A.